you guys you guys i literally just finished watching the show i started off in a bad mood because i just spent a whole bunch of money on my vehicle in november and then i spent a whole bunch of money on it last week and now i'm gonna be spending more money on it because <laughs> it's back in the shop again but i decided you know what let me go ahead and do this real housewives of potomac review and this review gave more life to me in this one episode i said this review this episode <laughs> gave me more life than the entire season than the entire season. And it's not because of the whole fight, the whole altercation. It is because of what we find out at the end of this episode, where the first time since Mia and Gordon have been on our screen that we've actually seen them clock in. I feel like this cast blatantly shows their hypocrisy whenever it comes to anything involving Wendy and Candace because you're not going to sit here and tell me that something that's being said out of someone's mouth is a legitimate reason for you to then be physical against them. Now, do you have to be careful with what you're saying? Of course you do, but you can't use that as an excuse. We'll begin the episode back where it left off. You hear Ashley say, are the cameras down yet? Are we wrapped? Are we done? Was this because Ashley legitimately wanted to know if they were done? Or was this because this was the plan all along? Because why is it such a big deal to know whether or not they're wrapped? We get the sign on the screen that says, 956 production wrapped. Mics were on. Deborah says uh, to Candace, is there anything you and I need to talk about? Candace says, absolutely not. The help is talking to me. Can you get the help? You have Deborah saying a whole bunch of things. Basically, you don't care to say anything to my face though, right? She already told you, absolutely not. So that answered that question. You hear Kierna or somebody saying, this is not the place. Which means that other people, including Kierna, were trying to de-escalate the situation. Then you hear the scuffle and you see Ashley. What happened? How did it get to that? How, how did it get to that? I don't understand what happened. <laughs> I was like, okay, Ashley. Ashley, just, just go somewhere. We find out that Deborah threw a drink on Candace and somehow Karen got hit in the head. She is bleeding. These ladies are so accustomed to throwing drinks that they think that everybody is just supposed to tolerate that and it's not okay. Ashley's stylist said, Deborah said she didn't hit anyone, okay, but she threw a drink. At this point, all we know is that she threw a drink. So if she just threw a drink, why is Kierna sitting in the bathroom holding her head like this with tissue, having somebody there with the first aid kit and the tissue has a whole bunch of blood on it? Obviously, something else was done to make her have a gash in her head. It's not her holding her nose. It's not her holding her eyes. She's holding her head. I'm telling you now, if I was Kierna, knowing me, two things would have happened, which would have probably been either the both of us would have been uh, holding uh, a bandage or something on ourselves or the both of us would be in somebody's cop car. Because there is no way that you're going to what we find out later is hit me with a glass in my head and think that I'm not going to defend myself. That is assault. Throwing a drink on someone is assault. People are going to stop thinking that they can get away with this type of crap and nothing is going to happen. Karen and Wendy are in the bathroom with Kierna along with, I think, like the camera crew and some other people. Kierna is applying a, a pressure, as I said, because she's bleeding. Y'all heard me. Like I said earlier, she's bleeding. Wendy is going off and Karen is like, you know what? Let's put Kier, uh, Kierna first. She's on the phone, I think, with her mom while she's holding her head. Karen is right in this moment, even though I too would probably be upset 
there is nothing is being accomplished by Wendy's fuss, fussing, especially since Kierna is so calm. You got Candace yelling outside, get that raggedy B out, Sesame Street girl. Don't let her come back. Meanwhile, Deborah is acting like she didn't do anything wrong here and she's the victim. She says, I threw a little bit of drink on Candace and out of nowhere, Karen hit me in the face and I threw my drink. I mean, at the time I thought how many drinks did she have, but Karen explains it later on. Ashley says, wait a second, she punched you? Deborah says, yes, you're not going to put your hands on me and think I'm not going to do anything. She threw a drink at the girl. You can't think that nobody's going to do anything. Everybody is not Wendy. In confessional, all the ladies that were there tell their perspective. Wendy says before Deborah even says anything to Candace that you could hear her saying something to Ashley, but she couldn't make out what was being said. And while she was talking to Ashley, she saw like what would seem like a, a, a combative nature. So like, I guess she saw a lot of hand flailing or maybe this, or she could tell that she wasn't saying anything calm in a calming manner. Mia says she didn't understand what the fight was for in the first place. Karen says that in her opinion, this whole situation seemed intentional and attention seeking. And as a result, Kay got hurt. For the record, I agree with Karen. Kierna says, basically, they were arguing that she takes the drink, uh, Deborah does, and douses Candace with the drink. She pushes her back with her arm because she can see that Deborah, in this case, is the problem. And as she's pushing her back with her arm, Deborah turns around, grabs a glass, a glass, and hits Kierna in the forehead with the glass. So Kierna's like, the first thing she's thinking is my face. And she doesn't my face. And I'm with her because it's one thing for you to hit me with an object at all. It's another thing for you to do it in my face. What if it was her eye? This could have been so much worse than it was. So she said, there was no fighting until Sesame Street, Deborah, whatever her name is, she hit me in the head with the glass. You then see Karen riding with her in the ambulance. And she says, it's unfortunate. And it's a lesson learned that they're not going to be able to mix certain friends with other friends. You guys are going to be mad at me, but me going in the ambulance and stuff like that, this wouldn't have been the end of it. I don't care if she had to call uh, the police and file a report or something. Something else would have had to be done. I probably wouldn't even file a police report if I'm being honest. I, it, it, don't hold it against me, y'all. I'm a love and light girl. <laughs> But we would have been in somebody's cop car together. We would. I I I I have to be honest. You you hit me in the face. I'm now getting rushed to the um the hospital. It's it's there's a problem here. It's, yeah, I'm gonna get a hospital bill, and I could have a possible scar on my face. And you did this just because I was trying to de-escalate a situation. She doesn't know, Karen doesn't know how Ashley missed that this could potentially be a problem. You then have her friends outside telling her it's not her fault that Kierna shouldn't have jumped in and that there's nothing that Ashley could have done. Ashley herself had said that she knew that there was tension bubbling uh, b below the surface with them. So she knew something was going to happen. She knew Deborah was going to say something. I don't care about how... Deborah talked or what she did or if she was there to support her or not or if Ashley uh is at fault the point here is that Deborah was wrong because Deborah made it physical Ashley says she feels like they were grown women and grown women aren't going to do this, that they could be in two separate sides of the club and it would have been an issue. But when you heard your friend saying something, you didn't stop your friend because we know at some point we're going to find out that your friend was talking to you before that even happened. So I don't know. I'm all over the place with these notes. She did it intentionally. It's two days later. The ladies meet to look at this magazine spread. Shanice shows up in a boot trying to figure out who everyone is based on the, the images that she sees displayed. 
Ashley claims that she had to take a pause from Deborah. And it basically was because Deborah was continuing to talk junk on social media, saying stuff like, ouch, how was that ambulance ride? And doubling down on what she was saying. Deborah feels like she did nothing wrong. And she said, Ashley says she was okay with the lapse of judgment, but how are you going to act moving forward? And it doesn't seem like Deborah's trying to move, be better moving forward. I did agree with that part of what she said. A lot of girls do not like their pictures. Ashley says that me is the one that picked them out. Giselle is there, even though her father had surgery. Karen checks on her, says, you know, let me know if you need anything, how you doing, all that other stuff. She says the surgery went well. She plans on flying back after this not so iconic spread. She didn't call it that, but that's what it felt like to me. I just felt like Giselle shouldn't have been there. She should have been with her father, but I guess she felt that she had work obligations, so she came. She got a call, she said, from Ashley telling her about the fight, and she feels like it didn't have to happen. That part, I do agree with. She said that Karen is a good girl. This is on Deborah. Cherie's foot got injured because she was trying to prevent a fight from happening. She grabbed a bottle from Candace. Somebody stepped on her toes and ended up re-injuring an injury that she already had in the scuffle. Based on what they're saying, it was Candace probably that stepped on her, her toes. Giselle claims that this put a stain on GNA and she's not happy. Y'all, I'm apologizing in advance. The grounds crew, crew is here cleaning up so you may hear some noise in the background. They didn't have anyone there of significance of significance so i don't understand how this put a stain on the brand the only media that was probably there was associated with bravo unless i missed it so giselle they don't know who y'all are it's okay ashley said wendy and candace were talking about deborah and they were calling her things like the help Wendy and Candace were not talking about Deborah at that point. What I saw was Wendy and Candace talking about the fashions. And if they were talking about her like that, production being against Wendy, in my opinion, and showing the things that they show sometimes when they do the flashbacks would have released that audio and let us hear it. So I don't think that that was a thing. But you all tell me maybe I missed it. Giselle says, oh, the mouths, the mouths. I don't understand why these women pick and choose when violence is okay. I don't care what you say out your mouth in the moment. The moment that you put your hands on me, all bets are off. And this to me is the same crap that happened with Wendy and Mia and they condone what Mia did versus they had such a big problem with what Wendy was saying. Then you have Giselle's hairstylist wondering who was there to protect Kay where was Wendy and Candace? I need him to shut up. They were right there in the shuffle, unlike Ashley. Them speaking with their mouths me does not mean that they have to deal with the repercussions afterwards. I don't understand what he was talking about and why he felt the need to even interject himself. The problem is that they do this whole telephone situation about what happened. And if you didn't witness it, then you don't need to be speaking on it. Kind of like Robin. The Monarch Magazine event is pointless. Me and her family arrive. Other husbands come too, but I notice Juan isn't there. Where's Juan? He doesn't have a job. Why couldn't he make it? She feels like it's important for them to be exposed to things uh, that aren't the norm Mia does. And that's why she brought the kids there. No other kids are there. So I was just like, okay, this just, I don't see the point. Mia is supposed to be Pam Greer. I don't understand how she's supposed to be Pam Greer when she didn't even have on the afro. Like if you were going to do anything else in that shoot, you should have put on a fro. But she didn't do it. The ladies looked nice, but I still don't see the point of this. Robin arrives, said that she was not there to see the incident. And it's unfortunate that Karen got caught up fighting in other people's battles. Robin would know about this because Robin fights in other people's battles too. Candace's sister is talking to Ashley by the stairwell. She says, I'm upset with your friend. Ashley says, I know, but you know, she's my real friend. Ashley is only putting Deborah on ice for the purposes of the show. I think that Ashley very much so wouldn't condemn Deborah in any way had she have not known that these other people were going to come down on her because she makes a lot of excuses for it when she's talking in her confessional. You can't say that you don't like what something 
what somebody did and then behind it say a whole bunch of butts and well if this person didn't do this and if this person did that no they shouldn't have did it she says she's never seen a uh, deborah like that before um Candace's sister says, I feel like she wanted attention and I don't want to see her uh, again. I'm not going to watch my sister potentially get attacked for a second time. I, if that was my sister, I'd probably say the same thing. Candace arrives. We get Candace's side of the story. Basically, she doesn't know how it got there. And she feels like at some point, this is going to be her fault. With that cast, it is. Giselle points out that she sees Mia and she points out to Mia that she doesn't look like Pam. She doesn't. Mia says, well, this is just a preview. Why are we previewing something that's not the real thing? Show us the real thing. You don't have a party not to show us it, the, some of the images that you're going to actually put out. And they had you on the front page of the Monarch thing. I don't think they're just previewing that. Like, I don't think she delivered. I don't think a lot of them delivered, but whatever. Wendy says, I'm not okay. I'm not in the mood to, to sit here and be all pleasant. We were in the hospital with Kay until four. And I have questions for Ashley. Ashley claims to want to know if Kay is okay. Call the girl and find out. Sharice is off to the side talking to Candace, saying, Candace, what were you going to do with that, that bottle? Because you're better than this. Candace says, I was going to hit her with it. Um, I would be defending myself with the bottle because if she hit me I was going to hit her with the bottle she says Candace you would have been in jail I do not agree with grabbing objects in order to fight someone if you're going to fight someone use your hands but that's not what people do any anymore which is why me personally because I know me and I know my temperament I do not go back and forth with people I can't do it it's it's not it's not in me I don't have a middle sometimes. I've worked very hard over the years to to be calmer and to approach things differently. And I know what I can and can't do. And what I can't do is argue back and forth with someone and have someone in my face because it's going to turn ugly. So for me, if it would have been me, I wouldn't have given that girl the time of the day. Ashley says it's not a good look. Candace isn't gully and neither is Ashley. And I don't think Candace is trying to act like she's gully. NECA arrives saying that everybody looks beautiful. Robin agrees with us that she does not look like Mariah in the picture. She said, I just look like a singer, you know, trying to be like a singer and I'm Robin. Karen says that she, she thinks there's an elephant in the room and it needs to be addressed. They all get together. Karen says, these were your friends. Ashley says, everybody in this situation was an adult, even though they're my friends. I don't need to take responsibility for their behavior. Karen has a reaction from this. I get that part of it. I don't like Ashley. She doesn't need to take responsibility for their behavior per se, but don't condone it either. Ashley feels like it was heartbreaking, but Candace was calling her vermin and, and the help and things of that nature. So was it heartbreaking or not? Because what Candace did shouldn't have anything to do with it being heartbreaking. Wendy says, look, this is the thing. Candace said multiple times to get away from me. Myself, uh, Kierna, and even Neca told her that this was not the place. Wendy says, it's clearly, it's clear to me that your friend came with an agenda. I gotta agree with Wendy. I also looked at what she was wearing. She had on pants. Her hair was in a ponytail. I feel like she was there and she had certain intentions to confront Candace. Because once the cameras were down, don't you find it convenient that even though she had an opportunity to do so beforehand, that Ashley kept asking if the cameras were down. And then as soon as they were down, then here goes Deborah springing into action. She told Ashley she was going to do it. I think she did. Y'all tell me what you think. In confessional, Ashley feels like Can this is Candace's second time saying these types of things and she just goes too far. Where was this energy before when some of these same things were done to the other ladies? Why is it that the other ladies can go too far falsely accusing Candace's husband of doing things, your friend being one of those people and that's okay, but Candace can't go too far? It's the hypocrisy for me. 
NECA says, Ashley isn't to blame, but Deborah was wrong that she shouldn't have come over there at all and she just should have ignored them. I want you to say that in front of the group. I don't want you to just stand there saying nothing when it, it clearly is something that should have been said in front of the group. Karen says, they can't bring people around that want to harm them or anyone in the group. Mia says, homegirl woke up the next morning after her alcohol wore off and still doubled down on the things that she said. Um, Ashley says she'll apologize. She apologizes and she'll try to be aware of who she brings around the, the group. I just want them to change the cast. I also noticed that Candace didn't apologize for anything either. Like, I, I don't expect Candace to apologize to Ashley or Giselle because I think that Ka that Candace was trying to defend herself. But I think that she could apologize for, you know, what happened to her friend. But she probably said that to her friend. Okay, scratch that. Wendy says, it's been a while since we've been in this place where we can all look at each other in the face. And I hope that we can grow this sisterhood. They agreed to try to continue to get to the same place. Giselle then thanks some of them for reaching out to her concerning what she's been through with her dad, especially Karen. That to me was kind of shady. You could have thanked them individually. She, we all know that the people who didn't reach out to her more than likely were uh, Wendy and Candace, and that's fine. Candace already said that she'll just, you know, wish them well from afar. Now, what Wendy does, it doesn't even matter at this point. Karen said, reaching out to you was the right thing to do. Giselle says that that's what grown women do. I guess then Giselle's not always grown because there's things that have happened. I don't think it was that serious, but Mia's mother had surgery too. And you didn't reach out to her or even say anything to her face. So, you know... If you're going to, you know, talk about grown women, be a grown woman too. They toast, then Mia thanks everyone for coming. We would then normally get like the end of the show thing where they tell us like the updates with everybody. And this is where we get. So Candace is working on new music with hopes of getting a major label. She wants to be successful on the charts, but she worries about, oh, uh, before she worries about her embryos. Wendy has uh, self-released the Dr. Wendy show on YouTube and she's hoping that this venture, venture sticks. There's shade on that because she's not the only person who's tried multiple businesses. Did they shade every hue when it didn't work out? Um, how well is Robin's hats going? Like there's other things that could have been mentioned, but you know, they're going to shade Wendy. Robin has signed a lease for Glow 30 and hopes to have it open in 2024. And the Dixons don't care about the opinions of their marriage. And at this point, we don't care about the Dixons. Karen is renovating her house in Surrey, hopes to have it open by 2025. She's also treating herself to a couple cosmetic uh, triple 20 tweaks. Giselle and Ashley have launched GNA. Her father passed shortly after surgery. I'm, I'm sorry about that. that that's hard. And she was close to her parent. Despite how I feel about Giselle, she was close to her parent. And no one should have to lose a loved one. And it's even harder when it's something like cancer. Because cancer just, it, you just never know where it's going to go. NECA's I, uh, UI was unsuccessful, but they still plan on trying. Ashley is still dating and she's not divorced. I don't think she will be until he's ready. We then see G come to the microphone and say how proud he is of me and he speaks highly of her. And then we get a clip of three months later after 11 years that this marriage is over. We didn't need this at the end of the season. I feel like this, this thing here, I get they felt like they had to drop it because of everything that's going on. Based on the little bit that was given in this clip, I think if anybody has a guaranteed spot locked in, it could be Mia because they gave a lot of information in this part. So we find out, we see Eddie and Wendy in confessional. And Eddie says, Gordon meshed all the guys in the group texting and saying that he has information for the guys and their wives on Mia. I feel like this is extremely tacky. I feel like Gordon is extremely manipulative and I feel like there was no need for him to do this. So he tells them that he's getting a divorce and that Mia was doing some things that weren't putting the kids first. Eddie said, okay, he heard it. 
he was unsure of it. He thought they were maybe just, you know, having some issues until he saw the article. It let him know, okay, he's not just blowing hot air. This is really happening. We then see Mia and Gordon in their apartment. It is very tense in there. She said, officially, we separated in July, but no one knew. He's hurt. He doesn't want a divorce. She said, if he, pro if he didn't go to TMZ, we probably would have figured this out, which means they're used to operating from this dysfunctional state. She said that... Um, Gordon did not like seeing the clip of Ashley and Mia where Mia said that she might have married him for his money because there was some truth to that. We then see TMZ title saying that Mia's a cheater and a gold digger. She wants to know when Gordon is planning on going back to Charlotte. He ran down a couple of dates. Um, he's like, you're the one who wanted me to come up here to be with the kids so you could do some things. And she's like, I'm tired of sleeping in Juju's room. His response is, this is one of the consequences because you're the one who wanted this. He kind of talks to her like she's a child. I've known that you've been having an affair for like 10 years, even before we got married. She was living with her new boo. The kids told him. I'll get to it. Their son told him that Mia was sleeping with Mr. Inc. I don't understand, number one, if this was truly what happened, and two, why the son knows this information. She says Mr. Inc. is her high school sweetheart that Gordon was aware of and he knew that she was sleeping with. She told him out at, camp, at counseling about it. He had been battling prostate cancer and certain organs weren't working. So on his 70th, 70th birthday, he gave her permission to do what she needed to do. This is a mess. She was told she had two rules. Number one was that she had to be discreet. And number two was that she could not get the kids involved. Which means Karen wasn't lying when she said Mia been cheating. Karen, Karen knows some stuff, okay? Karen may be a cheater too, but a cheater is recognizing a cheater. Anyway, uh, oh wait, was she cheated? Because he knew, okay. <laughs> Karen knew they had an open marriage. Um, My thing is, don't have an open relationship if you don't want what comes with the open relationship. So he said she was given those two rules and she did both. She was coming in late talking uh to the guy at two o'clock in the morning talking to him around the kids she said if you gave me your blessing why are you so upset he said because you took the kids around him she admits to rekindling things with the guy back in april we pan back to six months ago and she says that at that time she basically didn't know whether or not she wanted to get separated but it got to the point where they were arguing too much. He even took her phone for two hours. He then locked her in the room while having her phone because he was mad and told her to sleep it off. Gordon is abusive. I said it last episode and you all corrected me down below in the comments because I said I wasn't sure if I would consider taking money as being an ab abusive tactic and it is an abuse tactic. It's manipulative. It's a means to try to control the situation and here he is abusing her again by not only taking her phone but locking her in a room. So as she's calling him out on this, he says, I'm going to walk out. I'm going to go basically because she's calling him out. He says, this is unproductive and it's a waste of my time. The open relationship wasn't supposed to include Ink. He said, why did Ink think that Jeremiah was his kid? This the mic. It dropped. And it didn't drop for me because it was funny. It dropped for me because now you're going too low. Now you're going too low. She gets quiet and she says, that's not fair. He says, if you want fair, go to a carnival. That isn't right. 
because this isn't the right way for this young man to find out that you may not be his father. Mia can be anything or do anything that she wants to do when it comes to her situation with various males. But bringing a child into this situation and putting it out there that you may not be his father like this, that's low. That's low. She said, I told him the, the timeline. I told him that it made it questionable who his father was. And he said that he still wanted to be there for me. As they're talking, I'm like, this is the realest that they've ever been, but I don't want them to be real about this situation concerning their son. Because their son has friends. Their son is going to at some point hear about this from people other than them. He says, when she got money from the show, she felt like she could show out. Mia said, how are you going to sit there and act like I'm a gold digger and I'm all these things when after you got fired and everything else and you had all these issues with your family, I'm the one that was giving you money to eat. Okay, Mia, it was your turn because you were enjoying the benefits of that before that. You weren't complaining about him spending the money when he was spending the money. This is karma to me for both Gordon and Mia because let Mia tell it, Gordon did cheat on the wife to get her. She said she was tired seven years ago and wants someone who's gonna pour into her. He, on the other hand, is still willing to put things to the side. This makes no sense to me. He just wants an arrangement. Can she go or not? He wants her to stay because of the kids. Whereas the other guy ain't told her 10 years ago that he'll be ready whenever she is. And she feels like in those 10 years, he didn't get married to anybody else. So now may be the time. And that's the end of the episode. This episode had a lot to it. And I just want to know why we're getting this now. Where was this all before? Y'all tell me what you think down below. Next up, the reunion. Um, I'm not going to talk about what happened with Karen because it's not on the show. I thought about digging into the situation, but I guess if I were to make a comment about things, I would be that Karen never got an opportunity to grieve over the loss of um, her mother, but that's not an excuse. You know, with a DUI, you could have not only hurt yourself, but others as well. I'm glad that she's okay and others are as well. I hope that she takes this time to slow down and get whatever help it is that she may need. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for joining me this season. Until next time.